All right, Meghna the Stallion. Welcome. Hello, hello, Shantikans. Aneha. <laughs> hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah. So we are gathered here today at the Church of Ye, you know, <laughs> to 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 pay our respects to the one and only Kanye Omari West. Um. Yeah. So uh, it's it's only fitting that I bring Meghna on because uh, she was uh, the gateway to uh, my uh, introduction to this cult over here. Um, Meghna, tell us about yourself. Um, um, I, I agree with uh, what uh, Shanti mentioned, and I take great pride because um, after um, multiple links that Shanti has forwarded um, about uh, Kanye West albums described by The Office, Kanye West albums described by Rick and Morty, <laughs> Kanye West albums described by SpongeBob, I was like, I just, I had to say yes when he asked me, do you want to talk about Kanye on his new <laughs> podcast series? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you know, um, it, like Kanye is Kanye West is a visionary, a misunderstood genius, and presidential candidate. And we'll know uh, the results in in three days. But that's not what we're going to talk about. So, um, like his presence in the public eye kind of eclipses the actual genius that he is. You know, with every release over the past two decades, he's changed multiple industries. You know, um, and it's only really fitting that we gush about him for an hour. Uh, all three of us. So, um, okay. I, I, yeah, so, uh, you know, why, how, how do you get into Kanye? Why do you like Kanye and his music? Yeah, um, I think the, the first um, the time I heard about Kanye West was, uh, of course, the infamous uh, 2009 VMA scandal, where I'm like, how dare he steal Taylor Swift's thunder? Team <laughs> like, Swifty. Who is this guy? Yeah, who is this yeah. guy? Who does he think he is? But um, it was interesting because after that was a complete 180. And um, it's funny because like the average conversation goes where, you know, they're like, um, someone's like, so you like Kanye? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, oh, you think he's a genius? And I'm like, oh, yes. <laughs> and they're like, wait, this is the guy who said she just bleached her ass. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and uh, at this point, they're just plain worried. And, like, and I'm like, looking straight back at them with the most like unwavering conviction. Mm, mm. <laughs> and I feel like maybe we're on like this really big inside joke and um, either you're in it or you're not. And explaining the joke kind of ruins the beauty. <laughs> um, and uh, you kind of have to find your own way um, to Kanye. Yeah, and uh, it's, I've actually found it really hard convincing people to get into his, his music, you know, um, mostly because of his public antics and also because a lot of his work is really esoteric, right? Especially like if, if, if I just send Yeezus to a friend and like they just listen to um, the first track and just like, no, it's not, it's not for me. Hey, uh, Neha's an exception. Neha's I, an exception. I started with Yeezus <laughs> and I loved it. I was like, this is so, going to be my first, this is going to be my top Kanye album, no matter what else I listen to. Oh, and, no uh, way. I'm so proud. <laughs> And, oh, no, no, and we'll see how how that's changed uh, over time in the, over this course of this recording. Uh, so yeah, so uh, the whole point of this is to just gush over him. And so we're going to take this in a chronological order. We're gonna go. We're gonna cover his nine co-studio albums and the two collab albums that he made. Um, and yeah, that's it. And so we're with each album, um, like there's nothing that we can say that hasn't already been said about Kanye and his music. So it's just going to be mostly about why we like him, our personal feelings, how we got hooked into it, and maybe our favorite tracks and not so favorite tracks, right? right. And maybe we could start each with a with a little bit of context as to why the album is special. Because with, with Kanye, it is always about the context. Context always precedes and succeeds the album itself. Uh, and the appreciation of that album is highly predicated on that context. So um, let's just get right into it, right? So... The year is 2004. We have Kanye just burst onto the scene with with uh, with what I consider is his magnum opus, uh, the college dropout. Uh, a, a little context here. So he actually started out as a producer. He got his big break with Jay Z's The Blueprint, and uh, he wrapped his first single through uh, his jaw wired shut after a car accident. So the, a major underdog story, which really like captivated me. Right. So. Uh, through all these uh, albums, we, we can go in this order of Meghna, uh, Neha, and then meet, talking about why we like each album, and then we can proceed. Sure. Let's go. Neha, Good. sorry, Meghna, my bad. Yeah. Chanting, focus. 
Yes. Yeah, focusing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Go for it. Um, handsome. while college job, but I, I, and also your yeah. tier, yeah, um, and also give me your tier. So the the tier for. Uh, ah, right. So we're doing um, S tier, A, S tier, A, B tier, B tier. Okay. S to F. You could do S to F. You know, more yeah. options. Okay, so I think this is definitely tier A for me. Um, okay. One of the best debuts, hands down. Um, it was fresh. It took the radio by storm. Um, uh, also, what I really liked was um, the lyricism, which, according to me, takes kind of a downward dive as we go later into his discography. So this was some of my favorite um, um, material in terms of uh, the themes he tackles. And it's really hard because um, he doesn't even sound very pedantic, right, when he's talking about really big um difficult topics like um, institutionalized racism or his family or faith or um, even the minimum wage. So um, I think he does that really tactfully. And uh, another thing I really like is it's just really evergreen. Like, I can't believe it. This came out in 2004. Like, I listen to this now and it's just bizarre to think it came out 16 years ago. Um, yeah, and I think, um, I, I know this sounds super like reductive, but I, I think it was like one of the first non-gangster albums <laughs> to mm, come out was, at that was, time. Yeah. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, I thought uh, it was a fabulous debut, um, especially considering, like you said, the context, the fact that um, he recorded a lot of this uh, straight out of the hospital after his near fatal um, car crash. Um, yeah, um, Neha, go. <laughs> Favorite? Favorite tracks, least favorite tracks. Ooh, uh, I think Jesus Walks and Through the Wire, definitely um, favorite track. Yes. But um, um, especially Jesus Walks, the the bump, bump, bump <laughs> in the background <laughs> just gets you so amped. <laughs> yeah, the vocal layers, the, the fact that, it, that there are no, it, it's just a beat and just layers of vocals. It's insane. For sure. Production. It's like there's yeah. like this force that's trying to hold him back, but he's just trying to push and persevere and it, and uh, you can really feel it. Uh, Through the Wire is also really interesting because uh, especially the sample where, I mean, yeah, mm. he sounds like a chipmunk and Chaka Khan hated that, but yeah. <laughs> I thought it really worked. I love it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So least favorite track, name one, if you had to choose. That's really hard. That's really, really I know. hard. This mm -hmm. is an album with no bad tracks, but one bad track. Um, I forgot what, it, what uh, the the one where he goes off on those monologues, um, the, the three parts in between. Yeah, probably. I mean, it's the, not that I dislike closer, right? it. I just yeah. don't care for it, you know. Yeah. 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 All right, Neha. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I, I I kind of agree with everything Meghna has said. Actually, I think she's captured everything that I also thought of saying for this. Uh, College Dropout for me is a very, very special album. I think uh, I took a lot of time to listen to College Dropout and actually gather my thoughts around it because there's so much happening in every little, every little part of every little song, you know, and um, for me, I think it, it's a very personally, uh, I don't know, relevant album, I would say for me, because the struggles and the things that he talks about feel very, very real. It feels like something that, uh, something that I would relate to, something that I felt as a child, something that I felt while growing up, while being a part of all of these institutions that I have been a part of. And uh, I, I did feel like it had a lot of personal touch in terms of uh, this was before he got famous, before he, you know, got into this, this zone where uh, there was a lot of public criticism, media and, you know, all of that, which we see in his later works. So I did feel like this was straight from his heart and it captured everything that he wanted to convey to his audience. And uh, I, I also find the skits very, very witty, very sarcastic, very cleverly written. And uh, the production is great. And uh, I would agree with Meghna on the favorite tracks. Even my favorite tra tracks are Jesus Walks, Through the Wire and uh, All Falls Down. Uh, yeah, those three would be my top favorite tracks. And uh, it's really hard to pick something I don't like in on this. Um, maybe the last call, last call was- Last call, yeah. Yeah, I mean, hmm. it, again, I don't dislike it. It's just that it doesn't stand out for me as much as the other tracks do, perhaps. That, that, that's just me. Yeah. So what tier would you put this What uh, tier would uh, you put this yeah. Okay, um, this is definitely on the top tier, the S tier for me. Yeah. S tier, all right. Yes. 
yeah. That's that is the objectively correct answer. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, can so college dropout straight up as to no doubt for me. Uh, and so my relationship with this album has been pretty interesting as it has been with the rest of his discography. It wasn't an instant hit with me. Uh, I'll admit. So I, I the first time I heard I loved Slow Jams. I loved uh, Jamie Foxx's performance. I loved um uh, and I loved Jesus Walks and that was about it and it wasn't as high on my ranking of kanye albums but as time went on there was i uncovered more and more things about the album about its lyricism about uh, as i grew as i became more politically conscious about the issues that a lot of people around the world are going through the way he articulates his emotion and it was just him being himself right he, he wasn't trying to like uh, portray himself as anything it wasn't a chest thumper it was just him being himself using the music that he likes the soul music the 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 chipmunk sample it's a fun sweet experience to listen to and uh it it's paced extremely well although it's over and it's oh, it yeah it's over an hour long so an hour 16 minutes long and um i would say that so the albums in which kanye plays the underdog right so uh, to me these are college dropout and my beautiful dark twisted fantasy these two albums I feel so I think this is when he was at a peak when he was actually trying to break into something or prove himself and um when when the stakes were that high and the, and him time and him basically conquering everything that story associated with it and that along with the context of how great the production how pristine the production is how amazing the rapping is and the lyricism it's S tier it's a perfect album for me um so um favorite tracks Jesus walks the bum 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 and uh, i would say all falls down is in the running for maybe my favorite hip hop track of all time um and uh, you know i don't really dislike last call it's more like i see it as a, a victory lap after this amazing album that he's given us but it does go on for too long and i do tend to not play the whole song from time to time um again stellar album stellar stellar album one of the best albums of the 2000s hands down um yeah that's all i have to say about that anything else before we move on to uh, the 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 rest of his discography i really like the sound of that mm. entry lap <laughs> yeah <laughs> all yeah, right i could say that for sure at least uh, after, i mean considering it's 12 minutes long <laughs> oh yeah yeah yes yeah, quite a lot yeah. yeah yeah um all right so moving on a year later kanye comes out with late registration um and I'm not sure at what point he actually decided to make a trilogy, a college trilogy, college theme trilogy. I didn't really know, but I don't really know about that. But late registration, a year later, not too much context associated with it, but it's just it. I just see it as a more of an evolution from the college dropout. So I guess we could start with Meg now. Oh no, oh wait. Also, there was the George Bush uh, doesn't care about black people movement, which I still watch that video to this day. I love that video. Um, anyway, so Meg now. what makes late registration tick or not tick for you uh yeah i think what you said is the perfect segue that um um kind of uh, in the college dropout he was trying to make a point um and late registration was more like you know like uh, step back guys um i'm here i've arrived you know and um uh, i think it perfectly captures the period of his life um as well um and uh i found on my first listen i was just uh, chanting along like i'm i'm sky high you know <laughs> and uh i objectively or subjectively actually think that both that the college dropout has better songs at least for my taste but um hey mama is um um is a topic for me for sure hands down um absolutely um uh really really um vulnerable i guess considering um his mother is a, has been a very um prominent influential um figure in his life but uh yeah um i think it's a tier b for me considering i did give tier a to um um the college dropout yep um uh, neha yes i think that uh, you have summed it up pretty well i felt the same when i heard it for the first time um i i felt quite hooked on to the album which i didn't quite feel with the other kanye albums but with late uh, late registration i did feel like with college dropout he set out with this vision with this with this uh, idea that he wanted to carry forward and i think he did carry it forward with late registration and um i think for me again with 
the lyricism, the themes that he tackles in this and the production, all of these did make a lot of uh, difference to how I perceive this album and I do like it quite a lot. Uh, but I do agree with you on the bit uh, that I felt like College Dropout just had better songs. It had more catchy hooks. It had uh, it has songs that really, really, uh, you know, stayed with me. It was, it was just like there in my mind. So with late registration, I don't know if I've given it, you know, enough listens so far, but uh, I feel like it drops a little on that front for me. Um, my favorite songs on this would be Diamonds, the Diamonds Are Forever, I really like that, and uh, <laughs> Gold Digger, um, Heard Him Say, I think, yeah. yeah, these would be my top songs, and um, yeah. a song that I don't like on this, uh, let me just have a look at the track list, I guess, um, I can't recall a song that I disliked on it. Um, yeah, I just can't, uh, oh, that's okay. That's it, okay. Yeah. 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 What and year I would you put it in? It would be a tier B for me. Yeah. Tier B for you. Yes. Oh no. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why do that? My late registration, man. So late registration, uh, again, a slow burner for me in terms of my appreciation over the years. Um, uh, so at first listen, again, it is not nearly as catchy as college job or admittedly. However, it is a much more complex album. There's a lot more depth to this album, in my opinion, compared to the college dropout. He Kanye goes from tackling more personally centric issues on the college dropout to more broader issues uh, um, uh, uh, surrounding humanity. Like you know, you have the uh, slave workers, you have uh, addiction. I'm I'm just naming uh, track names at this point, but you know, you have. You have a much more conscious uh, version of Kanye who is still at the cusp of not having to want to prove himself. So you find Kanye in this little sweet spot, right? Where he he has matured a little bit from his first album, but yet he 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 doesn't have anything to prove. So he ha has the space to do what he wants to do. And again, he teams up with, uh, I, I think his name is John Bryan, with the production where he gets the strings and the jazz loops and the much better samples, you know, the... the uh, it's. I mean, uh, again, it's not nearly as well put together as the uh, College Dropout, although that, that is an argument to be had. But again, like uh, I think this is an album that has been slept on because I think a, few, a lot of people feel like it's the College Dropout's younger brother. But I and I do see on hip hop Twitter the growing appreciation that the people sort of have for this, uh, this album. Um, so Kanye taking the soul influence from the first album, mixing it in with the strings and, you know, more lavish production that we will see later. Um, I, you know, I, I have really nothing bad to say about it. But uh, one thing I would say is the skits don't feel as catchy or as, as funny or as good as the ones on College Dropper. So that's one thing I would say about it. Uh, yeah. Um, but but solid eight year for me, you know, uh, absolutely. Like there's, there's not a single song I don't actually like. I mean, my, my favorite songs are of course, Hey Mama. I like crack music a lot. Um, and heard him say gold digger. Uh, basically I, I'm just the entire album, but there's not, there's not a single song that's baffling. But the fact that although Neha did not name, wasn't able to name a bad song on this and she still puts it on the, on the lower tier of the college, uh, college dropout that at least says a lot about the appeal of this album and it's an, it's an album that we need to spend more, a lot more time to actually absorb than the other uh, the rest of his discography so solid eight year for me over there all right i have a hunch Move that on. um all of shanti's favorites sit in tier sorry but we'll find out at the end <laughs> <laughs> we will find out uh, you yeah, find out yes that was okay album to talk about yeah um all right so moving on uh is what I feel is his most overhyped album, in a way, uh, uh, with graduation, but which is by no means a bad album itself. Not a lot of context to this. It was just him. It's just him evolving. It's just him going up and up away, uh, from later station. So uh, make the the gra um, graduation. Yeah, uh, uh, this is going to be um, short and curt. So um, like you mentioned, I agree. I feel like um, graduation kind of lives in the shadow of its um, siblings in the trilogy. Um, it has great songs, dope beats, great samples, but I, I don't care for it much. 
I guess maybe that unpopular opinion might be popular amongst the three of us, but um, uh, a lot of people seem to consider it one of his best albums, which um, I can respect, but I also um, um, like some of his other works more. Um, I agree that it's really peak old Kanye, and I can't deny I always get hyped when Stronger comes on, but um, <laughs> graduation. Yeah, the fact that he got Chris Martin on the album, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, he's he's always done well with the collaboration, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, this is uh, unfortunately going to be a tier C for me. Ooh. <laughs> so favorite songs, least favorite songs? Uh, ooh, okay. Um, favorite songs is actually going to be stronger. <laughs> um, least favorite is probably, um, oh, let me take a look at the track list too. Probably the Lil Wayne one, actually. Yes. I'd oh, like Barry Bonds. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Interesting. Same. All right. Go Neha. <laughs> um, I think when I started listening to Kani, I did like graduation a lot. Um, it's because I felt like this, this is an album which for me had a lot of uplifting beats. It had very catchy, groovy hooks. And uh, I think at that point, I was really into that kind of a mood or zone is what you can say. So I, I really liked the album and I, I was pretty much hooked onto it for a couple of weeks. Um, however, like you said, you know, I, I feel like right now my opinion or how I feel about this album is just that it's a good album. It's a well-produced album and I like it, but it's not the best. And, um, as an album itself, I think it did do a pretty good job at what it was trying to convey, what it was trying to do, but it's just that, uh, the content of it. And I think that there's a lot more that Kanye has that he could have put in into this to make it more um, prominent. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but yeah, <laughs> that, that's my feelings on this. I'm sorry, there's some noise construction going on. Um, all right, so yeah, I think Stronger is my favorite song as well. Um, I kind of like that, that song that uh, Everything I Am, Flashing Lights, yeah, those are yeah. like that, decent yeah. shows, yeah. All of his light yeah. songs are really good, right? All, all the light songs from Kanye. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, right. So Tia? Um, Tia for me would be, um, I think it's a C Tia for me as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. So I more or less agree with uh, the two of you about graduation. Graduation was, 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 but that's by no means it's a bad album. Like the fact that, so, it's a CTR album for me as well, but seeing that's a CTR album doesn't really mean it's a bad album itself. It's an extremely enjoyable album. The artwork by uh, Murakami, right? The Japanese designer. Amazing artwork. I think it's my favorite Kanye artwork. Really good. Um, so Kanye kind of, I, I like that he, he he kind of grew tired. Like he didn't stick to his guns as, as much as he did because, you know, I, I feel like he felt like the soul and the chipmunk stuff were kind of, uh, reach the natural end of life and he wanted to make more club bangers. I I, I distinctly uh, remember, I don't remember him, but I, I, I saw, I remember an interview where he said that he wanted to make albums that everyone could enjoy. And that's what he did. It's, it's an instantly catchy album. Yeah, it's, it's something that you will like on the first listen. It's not something that needs to grow on you. But um, that's that vibe, that club vibe doesn't really hold up over the 51 minutes uh, runtime, and it does get stale in the middle. Um, you know, um, of course, the standouts, the good life uh, with, with T Pain, amazing track, stronger. I don't have to say everything that has to be said about stronger has been said, but you do have low lights like drunken hot girls, which I mm -hmm. skip 100% of the time. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but. It's by no means a bad album. I always listen to it while doing the dishes. It always gets me through the dishes, and uh, you know, it's 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 a fantastic album. But I, I, I but the fact that it has it is his most commercially successful, I believe. Uh, I think that's why it gets a little more um, uh, praise from non Kanye fans, people who haven't seen the light yet. Um, so 
All right. So, um, you know, uh, moving on from this Upwork trajectory, uh, we're definitely going to not get any anything different from him, right? The, the next album, it's, it's going to be, he's going to stick to his lane. He's going to stick to his guns. He, he's, he's not going to release anything. Um, yeah. And then, and then 808 happens. Um, the album that is not my favorite album, but is the album that I respect the most, right? Because of what it has done for the uh, for the landscape right now, and also you know, the context surrounding it. You know, the 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 loss of his mother, his, his breakup with Amber Rose, all that has been said already. But uh, Meghna, tell us about your thoughts. I love Auto Tune, <laughs> so I just. <laughs> It's an unpopular opinion, but I, I love Autotune. And I think this example is, I'm sorry, this album is a stellar example of how to do it right. Um, it's a very bold move, especially um, to experiment um, with it after the massive success that graduation was, like you mentioned, it was a huge commercial success, but um, he just decided to um, nudge the needle, push the envelope with uh, 808s. And um, I know it's been dubbed a grief project and um, it was um, a lot of dark nights in the studio and um, especially losing his mother who was someone, um, if not more important, at least as important to him as <laughs> he used to himself. Um, yeah, listen to Hey Mama, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think what's really interesting to note about this album is there is uh, no profanity. He doesn't swear. Like, I, I saw this up somewhere and I'm like, wow, I did not think of that. And that's really interesting for Kanye. Um, to all our Christian listeners. <laughs> this is the album is you want you to mean. start with. Yeah, this is what you need to start with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, um, as heavy as it was on the autotune and the synths, uh, I do um, understand some of the criticism that um, he doesn't sing enough and folks didn't like that. And um, it was um, relatively light on some of the grandiose ideas that he used to tackle um, in um, some of the previous works that people were familiar with. But um, I, I think it's definitely a solid tier between S and A. It keeps jumping between S and A because I'm not sure I want to put it up there with some of the S's, but uh, I think I think I'm gonna stick with A. Uh, I think the drums on Love Lockdown have to be one of my favorite Kanye instrumental moments um, for sure. Just just the alternating between the left ear right ear is just so much fun. Uh, I think Heartless and I think even Paranoid really satisfy some uh, late night 3 a.m. music uh, needs. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, it uh, I think not just me, it made a lot of people hate autotune less. And uh, I think that's an achievement in my eyes. Uh, I understand it's not objectively as good as some of his other works, uh, but this is one album I return to the most outside of uh, Life of Pablo. All right, favorite track, least favorite track. Favorite track, I guess it's Love Lockdown for you. Yep, for sure. Uh, least, favorite least favorite track. Um, I think uh, I, I, the, the last three tracks, that's something I don't, I, I generally tend to skim. Probably, again, the Little Wayne track. <laughs> I'm, I'm noticing <laughs> oh a God, pattern we here. Have the favorite, we have the favorite, favorite track. <laughs> I hate yeah, that song. You in my nightmares? Cool. I just hate it. Yeah, he's a Trump supporter now, so we can like dunk on him all we want. So that's okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, but definitely um, heartless, paranoid, love lockdown, favorite tracks. Yeah. Yeah. Robocop is slightly underrated. Um, it's a, I like that. Yeah, yeah. You can click on that. Yeah. I love it. It's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I think uh, with eight weight, I think I need to be in a specific zone to be able to enjoy it to be able to appreciate it and fortunately or unfortunately i don't think i've been in that zone for the past few weeks months whatever so i haven't really gone back to it a lot as much as i've gone back to the other kani albums but for me this album i feel like the autotune is again it's a it's stellar it's, it's beautiful and it just it's just done perfectly on this record and uh, uh, I don't think he raps a lot in this uh, it's just mostly like auto tunes and verses and it's not really hardcore rapping which is something I really appreciate and respect about Kanye especially after graduation uh, he did take a leap of faith with this and uh, he did try and experiment something that he knew 
was probably not going to be appreciated by a lot of people. And uh, yeah, like Shanti said in the beginning, I think I do respect him for getting on with this. And uh, the mixing is great on this. The production is beautiful. The drums are amazing. Um, and it has a very, you know, sad, depressive kind of vibe to it. But it, it's again, it feels very emotionally powerful, emotionally evocative, I, I guess. And uh, that's what stands out for me for this album. And uh, my favorite tracks on this would be Pinocchio Story. I, I just don't know why I like that a lot, but I really, really, really love that. It, it was an impromptu thing, right? Like you did, did that on the stage. Um, and when I heard it the first time, I was just so impressed that this is something that he came up with on spot. And uh, it really, really like stood out for me in this album and everything he tries to convey through that track. And I'm so glad it's included even on the Spotify, uh, you know, the, the album on Spotify. So I really, really love it. Amazing is my other favorite track on this and Robocop would be my, you know, those would be my top three on this. I really, oh, really love it. Talks about amazing. I love amazing. It's 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 amazing. I mean, it's beautiful. I love the way it uh, progresses. I love the it's mixing on it. Of the day. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So what do you? Yeah, uh, I. I'm gonna say it. I hate "See You in My Nightmares" on this. It just doesn't have the effect that the other songs have, for me. So the tear for this would be um, B for me. Tear B. B for you. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. All right, so eight of eights uh, for me. Um, so given the context, I do appreciate it a lot because we see the aftermath of the eight of eights in basically the whole of 2010s hip hop, right? Um, so I would say if someone wants to listen to it right now, it may not sound as groundbreaking as we make it out to be because so many artists have taken on that style. The order you know, your Mean Girls, Drake, um, etc. But, uh, and it's also worth noting that I, th I think this album was recorded in like what a week or it was I think two weeks or a month or something like the entire album Maybe was put exactly. together yeah two yes yeah, mm -hmm. something like that yeah that which, which is it's really amazing and the emotional bluntness right um of this album is something that's really that I, I we don't really see much much because when you when you typically feel artists getting emotional it's more high energy aggressive right like in Pinkerton or something like that and um this is a blunt album even the drums you have the beats just land it just feels like he's he's put like a bunch of bed sheets on top of the drums and you just like banging it like there's no character to the drums as well there's it's emotionally stale but at the same time it's emotionally potent and i feel like it's a it's an extremely unique addition and also it's a, again like like i said it's an album that i respect a lot given the context i i listen to it a lot and it's also not it's a stark contrast to graduation where that was more of a club album this is more of a headphones sitting with your own feelings at 3 a.m like mike megna mentioned um it's uh, yeah uh, so it's more of a an introspective personal deep dive into uh, a very broken tortured mind um and of yeah like neha mentioned pinocchio story the fact that he just he uh you know uh, that was a live recording an impromptu live recording and that and that adds so much character to the album um love lockdown the drums on the production everything that's been said to it has been said already but it's just that my personal experience with this album is um more of a more introspective one which i i can't really say for a lot of uh, his discography except for one other album which we'll get to um all right so moving on yeah. The album Which that absolutely no one ever thought of. Oh yeah, it, it is. Uh, I would say it is solidly in an A tier for me. Okay. Um, you know, um, I I, re I really really this uh, like there's nothing about the album that I don't like. Maybe amazing. Uh, no, uh, see, uh, yeah, uh, the Lil Wayne track. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so okay. moving, moving on to the album that no one has ever heard of or no one ever talks about. Um, that no one knows anything about. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, is uh, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Um, so I mean, the context about this has been talked about multiple times, but uh, in a nutshell, it was it was after the 
Taylor Swift controversy. He kind of self-isolated himself in Hawaii. And this is when his whole aesthetic of an, an artist to a creative CEO, uh, the, the, like that transition happened, right? When uh, up until later, he was, he was a solo artist who would collaborate with other producers. But now he, he kind of took the role of a creative CEO, kind of curating the sounds that he sees in his head, right? So uh, after this an entire year of self-exile, he comes out with this grand, uh, you know, uh, in-your-face, uh, opulent album. Um, so I guess that's, uh, I I'll save the rest of my take for my turn, I guess. Um, Meghna. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. We're finally in the thick of it. <laughs> this is the yes. meat that I wanted to discuss, but um, I can... <laughs> it's going to take a while. Um, I'm afraid that at this point, uh, I like this album so much that I have nothing constructive to offer. <laughs> it is um, um, the most absolute beautiful catharsis, catharsis on love and fame. And um, I think your introduction was quite apt. Um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a piece of art, right? It, it, this, the, the musical embellishments on this album are just, uh, it's shining glory whether it's the small ones, the big ones, the grandiose ones, the forgotten ones. It's, it's, um, you don't see a lot of rap albums with long sections where, you know, there's no rapping or singing and it's just guitar solos or vocal or solos or just horn riffs or orchestral um, motifs. It's just, um, every track is a 10, every track is an anthem. Um, I'm not sure how I would feel uh, about this album if I, started off as a Kanye West fan listening to the Graduation Trilogy and then coming here. But that was not the case because um, it was kind of a reverse route for me where I came to my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and then went to the Graduation Trilogy. And I agree that that does have some sort of bias, but um, this, this album has been just so massively influential. I get it, people call it overrated, but that's true for any um, piece of art that uh, is widely acclaimed and widely loved. And um, I think uh, the lyrics just flow so well hook to hook. I think that's it, this album is so tight. Like I know enough has been said about the production and some people do actually have problems with it that, oh, there's some mixing errors or there's the occasional like cutoff and whatnot. But uh, I think it's just so, when, when, when we say it's perfect, I think it's just so exquisitely beautiful. You can't not play this from front to end. Uh, it, it like, what kind of a monster are you if you stop playing it, you know? <laughs> Um, solid TRS. <laughs> solid TRS. Don't make me pick uh, a track I don't like. Sue me, but don't make me pick. <laughs> you are excused in the context of this album uh, alone. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, mm. perfect, perfect description. Yeah. Neha. Yeah. I don't think anyone could have uh, put it in better words, but uh, I have a slightly li different uh, perspective on this because. Um, my Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was one of the first albums I heard uh, by Kanye after Yeezus, I think. And um, it did not appeal to me as much on my first listen. Um, the first three, four tracks did because, you know, I mean, you have, uh, what are the tracks? You have Dark Fantasy, you have Power, you have Gorgeous. These are, I think these are absolute masterpieces. Anyone who disagrees on that really needs to rethink about music. And yeah, how go to see Neha. Music. She's a therapist. Uh, yeah, yeah. Come to me. I, I will teach you how to listen to music. <laughs> okay, that's a very condescending way of putting it. Anyway, so uh, yeah, so I think uh, as time progressed, it took me quite a while to appreciate tracks like Monster, like So Appalled. Uh, these were tracks that I did not fully understand or appreciate in my first two or three listens. But then after I heard it more and more, it started growing on me and it it's still growing on me and I'm absolutely in love with these tracks. Um, I think uh, in Melon's review, he did mention that he didn't quite feel that the uh, last few songs were very good. And I do agree with him on that. Don't hate me for this, but um, I, I do not uh, feel very strongly about Blame Game. I understand what he's trying to convey. It is a very complex thought, very complex feeling. Uh, the skit just goes on for too long and I tend to skip it. Um, Hell of a Life is okay for me. Uh, I think until Runaway, I absolutely, absolutely love this album. It's a solid S tier for me. But because of the end, I, I just feel like it just 
takes away some of that uh, that that glory and the masterpiece that this album could have been for me and this is just my personal opinion so i would put it on uh, the a tier and uh, my favorite tracks on this would be dark fantasy i think it's one of the best openings you can have to an album it's just i don't have the words to explain how good it is and uh, power definitely i think you can never recreate a song like that's anywhere close to power and uh, i had a tough time picking up a third favorite I, I, i was doing this like before the podcast i was trying to pick up like th- three favorite tracks from each album for this one i really really struggled because uh, i love gorgeous i love monster so paul runaway even uh, lost in the world so i don't have a third favorite on this but i definitely dislike blame game out of uh, all the other tracks here yeah <laughs> yeah That's the chris all. dogs get um, you know it's, uh, it's yeah anyway so for, so yeah w- I really can't offer anything that uh, hasn't been said so I'm I'm just going to give you my personal um, experience my journey with this album so Meghna uh, asked me to listen to Kanye West I was just skeptical I uh, you know I was like uh, Kanye and then she was like yeah yeah check it out check it out it's fine it's fine so I was sitting in an office in I think it was 2017 it was my internship I I put on my beautiful doctors of fancy dark fantasy comes on and I was instantly smitten I was like that like opening an album like this it just uh, i i and I, so listening to that first song i was like this is so amazing that i am either going to hate the rest of the album or love it right but uh, i was i was gladly the uh, the former so yeah the latter what do i say first anyway uh, so you know a track after track after track it was it, it it's it so it's him spending an entire year with the best minds of the music industry working on this and you can see that you can see how how intricate the amount of detail that he because he was really fighting the uh, his per, his perception in the rest of the world right everyone every single person hated him so this is the second underdog story that uh is in the Kanye canon and the stakes were that high and he had to prove himself because after 808 it's like the immediate reception of it wasn't that great you know so I come back to my personal opinion and then you had power which which again it blew my mind like my my uh, I I I couldn't work the like half that day because I was just listening to the album on loop absorbing that album the the lyrics the the wordplay on it it's it's insane you know um, and the the way he mixes I never and like I was coming into uh, this album as a prog rock fan as a as a guy who listens to Pink Floyd and Yes and Genesis and then the the incorporation of progressive rock elements and tracks like Devil in a New Dress the guitar solo on that of course Runaway you know the the the, the again the vocal Magnum Opus vocal, yeah mag, yeah Magnum Opus Magnum yeah no the Pusha T feature mm, I'm, I'm a little um, 50 50 on that but um, again so it it's this, this album just is like i feel like it's a crowning jewel you know it it's uh, uh there's um also like yes you can see the tracks like all of the lights are a little generic uh but that's i don't care like it it's a supremely enjoyable album there's there's, there's lots there's every single time you listen to this album that there's more to peel back more the features the way that he gets features together the nikki minaj verse at the end oh of my monster God. It's, it's it was incredible the first time i heard it, the the attitude like that's what hip hop is supposed to be and i i feel like hip hop has kind of lost that level of attitude that uh, that over over time um and the way he kind of curates jz rick cross and all the all these people coming together in this beautiful uh, menage of awesomeness it's amazing uh, but again uh, so this is solidly in the s tier for me as well i i, I do believe it's a masterpiece uh, there's there's uh, none of peers i can sing it uh, the blame um, game chris uh, chris rock skit uh, i feel like i i get why it's there but i feel like it just goes on for too long um, i mean the the fact that Kanye uh, reposts out someone's pussy i get it i get it. he did that i know i move on you know uh, <laughs> but that, that's but well, that's okay it's just Kanye being Kanye and it, it, it's 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 a time capsule of his entire personality brought out by the greatest minds in the music industry at the time and 
not much more I can say. So favorite tracks, um, I would say Dark Fantasy, the best album opener ever, ever that I've ever heard. I bet you all need to listen to it. Dark, <laughs> Dark Fantasy. I, I, okay, I know where Meghna is yeah. uh, coming out. It's up the there. It's up there. But <laughs> it's up there. It is up there. It is up there. And of course, Power and Runaway are my top three in this album. Uh, I, I mean, if there's one thing that our one listener uh, takes out from this podcast, it has to be that go listen to this album if you haven't heard it already. It's an it's an amazing experience itself, um, mm-hmm. not just a work of art. Uh, it's the Sistine Chapel blaring through your headphones, is what it is. Um, cool. So I, I guess that's all I have to say about this one at this point. Um, so, uh, so, so after this, he was again, once again, respected by everyone everywhere. He was again a god. You know, he was uh, he was in the upper echelons of of art and hip hop, and he was he was basically ruling the world at that time. Apart from you know an up and coming Drake at that time, uh, so a year later he he decides to drop this collab album with Jay Z called Watch the Throne. So it's not part of his core solo studio discography, but it's also worth but it's just uh, w- worth talking about. Um, so Meghna, what are your thoughts about that Watch the Throne? So um, um, when I was invited to the podcast, I was fighting Shanti on this. I was like, do we have to talk about Watch the Throne? We, we have, have to, to talk about Watch the Throne. <laughs> um, I, I just can't get into this album. Uh, me disliking Jay-Z doesn't help either. You dislike um, Jay-Z? Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. He's really whoa. populist, man. It's just... <laughs> Oh, okay, uh, a whole other podcast episode coming up on that. Anyway, um, <laughs> we'll have, we'll have a spin-off series. <laughs> we'll have a spin-off series yeah. uh, this was one album I had to revisit uh, so that I could, um, you know, gather some thoughts about what I'd like to say. Um, uh, it gave us Otis, so that's that's a small wins, right? Um, also, I think this was definitely. Um, um, a f- I really like the album opener. No Church in the Wild is a total banger. Like, I think this is one of those tracks. Um, it's a pick me up for me. Like if I need to like um, just feel the energy, this is the song I play. Like blaring, like speakers turned all the way up. Um, but yeah, I um, I think this would be a tier C for me. Not more so because um, it's not a bad album. It's an album I personally have never uh, been compelled enough to listen to more or revisit more or analyze more. I don't have any. Um, um, subjective experiences slash feelings associated with it. So when you when you mention this album, I'm like, um, just meh. So, um, but that's me. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, Neha. Yeah, um, I do Not agree with most of the things you've said because uh, this album just felt very uh, pretentious to me when I heard it the first time. It just felt like it just felt very larger than life and like. I, I don't know. It was like showing off this this look where I am right now. You you bitches can't touch me. Okay, so it gave me that vibe, and uh, I didn't quite like it, especially after listening to the other uh, albums that I heard, and uh, it just didn't click with me. Even though I am someone who enjoys sounds like sounds that are very very uplifting things, like uh, I, I was at one point really into EDM and you know and this album does have a lot of those very uplifting beats I would say I I don't know if uplifting is the right word for it but uh, you know those tunes which really like which are meant to hook you on but it just didn't do that for me Uh, however the few tracks I did like were uh, Niggas in Paris I I like the track it's very uh, dancey like you can just like you can just exercise to it. You can dance to it. You can chop your vegetables to it. <laughs> you can do everything to it. And uh, I, I really like that track. I love No Choice in the Wild. Otis, yes. And uh, I think I really, I don't feel very interested to go back to it, but I would like to revisit the, this album maybe at a later point to just see whether my thoughts, whether my feelings have changed with time, whether there's something I missed out on while I'm talking about it right now. So yeah, that's about it for me. And which uh, tier? For, um it would be a C tier for me. Yeah. 
See, I, I, huh. I think this too, I think this album makes me feel really cool. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, 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 it, it, it does. It doesn't mean I like it, but I'm like, this album makes me feel really cool when I listen to it. I'll give it that. <laughs> right. So C tier for you, right? Yeah. All right. So, okay. So the way I see this album is the last. So it's like what last call was to the college dropout. It's like, yeah, I, I've released this amazing bunch of tracks and now I'm going to take some time to tell you all how great I am for making those tracks, you know? So that, uh, that's what Watch the Throne is, you know? It, it's a, it's an extended uh, ode to how awesome Jay-Z and Kanye are. And it's also, uh, I also kind of view it as a, a torch passing moment from Jay-Z to Kanye because Jay-Z was his mentor and back in the day. It was like a torch passing on moment. But beyond that, I do get that beyond the more the very expensive sounding uh, production and uh, you know uh, some clever wordplay here and there um, i don't think the uh, the album has as much weight as uh, compared to the rest of the uh, his, his, his discography it's an album that I, I i i listen to it in the shower maybe while walking to work on a monday morning um, but beyond that, beyond Otis and maybe uh, a bunch of other songs, not as co- consequential as before. Um, so, you know, uh, so it's a D tier to me, although, but that doesn't make it a bad album. It's just not as consequential or not as uh, interesting as the rest of his catalog. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Makes sense. So yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, Otis. Yeah. Is Otis is the best song on the, uh, on like hands down. Like the 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 Nina Simone sample is is uh, the way it's used is just amazing. And he will go on to use more Nina Simone albums in the future. But I feel like this is the best use of Nina Simone in Kanye's catalog. So I, I, I guess that's all I have to say about it. Uh, all right. So we are skipping. Cruel Summer because that is not an album. Um, yeah, so Jesus, 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 Jesus. <laughs> I just like saying that so much. Jesus, Megan, what do you think of Jesus? Ooh, I'm I'm so excited to talk about Jesus. Um, Jesus is a, it's a mood. It's a purely manic. I love that. Um, I think it is the king of limbs of Kanye's discography. Um, Aha. take it or leave it <laughs> mm. uh, it's something that just clicks or it doesn't um, and um, maybe for the occasional listener it could click after a couple of listens but I honestly think that um, as soon as you listen to this album either you're like okay I'm going to dig this vibe or I'm not going to and we've seen this comparison a lot uh, if uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy and even Watch the Throne were like um these really maximalist um, albums, then this is just really like bare bones. Um, I really like um, the um, that Daft Punk, Daft Punk um, backed a couple of the tracks. So those were a couple of polarizing, but still stunning um, span of songs. Yeah, there are some corny lines, I guess, but it's nothing I can't get past. Um, it's a favorite f- tracks, yeah. on site, love black skin, love new slaves, love hold my liquor. I mean, it's interesting. I know people ha- do have criticism about new slaves where he's talking about, you know, comparing being a celebrity to slavery and um, talking about um, Solomon, the, the guy who um, 12 years a slave, the memoir was based on and, um, you know, how that's really unfair. But um, I don't know, that's, 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 that's art, I guess. Really loved Blood on the Leaves. I think that's definitely one of my favorite tracks. Um, I think uh, Blood on the Leaves, uh, why I really like it is uh, it's um, it's one of those tracks. Um, um, I-, I was looking for a metaphor to describe it. And this is what I came up with. It, it feels like screaming into a pillow, <laughs> how I might feel after it. Like just just that um, it's, it just really um, captures this inner turmoil and really pulls a visceral emotion out of me when I listen to um, Blood on the Leaves. Uh, it's kind of like runway, but like on steroids. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I really like it. 
<laughs> um, really like Bound 2. I know the video was absolutely ridiculous and um, <laughs> folks. Uh, I like it. I like it. I like it. It was good. I like the video. Stupid. Now. It doesn't make any sense, but okay. Not, hey, dude. Fine. But I, okay, I feel fine. like if someone could pull it off, it's just, it's only Kanye. It's just so brash and yeah. so bold, but uh, everyone makes fun of Bound 2, but I, I like it. Um, this album is tier A for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, Aha. Jesus. Take on first... Jesus. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> this was the first uh, Kanye album I actually like properly sat down and listened to, and I remember it felt very, very visceral for me. You know, I could I could feel the emotions in my skin when I was listening to it, and I think it's. It can be a very uncomfortable album to listen to for a lot of people. And like Meghna said, it, it, it's either going to click with you or it's not. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I, I feel like it's very hard to be in between with Jesus. Um, I think the lyrics are a little meh. They're, they're, I mean, they're okay. They're, they're not great, not as good as the other albums have it. Um, I really like the production on this. I love the experimentation that he's tried doing with it. And in my eyes, he did do a good job. I know the reviews are very polarizing on it. A lot of people have said that, you know, this is just a mess. It's uh, terrible or whatever. But uh, for me, I think it really clicked, you know. And this is an album I keep going back to whenever I'm feeling a lot of anger, a lot of rage. And I sort of want an outlet for it and uh, I tend to listen to music uh, based on how I'm feeling at the moment. So this is an album I keep going back to because I have a lot of rage against, um, uh, you know, (laughs) corporate life structure and uh, exploitation. And I think all of that really, really, this album really brings out those emotions in a very cathartic way for me. And uh, my favorite tracks on this would be Bound to definitely, I think it acts as a perfect closure for this record. Uh, I love Black Skinhead, I love Blood on the Leaves and uh, a bunch of other songs. I think a lot of songs on this are great. Um, One song that didn't quite uh, stand up to my expectations while I was listening to it would be Guilt Trip. I think I don't absolutely enjoy it. It's it's okay. Like it's, it's not as great is not as impactful as the other songs for me and uh the tier for this would be um it would be a tier b for me yeah hmm. yes shanti your turn fascinating all right so i love Jesus. okay so the first time i heard Jesus, i loved it it was great i liked every single i loved the energy i loved like I'm someone who loves grunge music and metal and all that. So that kind of went well. Like, and in industrial music as well, right? Although he was trying to ape, uh, you know, uh, Death Grips and um, similar artists from that time. But um, it's only recently that I realized that Yeezus is a concept album. Would you would you believe that? You know, it, it's it's in like, it was actually like over, over the past few months. Like I, I first heard Yeezus like three years ago and I liked it at the time and it, it it kept moving in and out of my frequently played album list, but it's only recently, like the the past couple of months, where I actually realized that it's a concept album. It's an album. It's an album where you he's marking the transition from him being this lone warrior to a family man, right? So you have an entire album where he's kind of excising the most depraved part of his souls, you know, like the the hedonistic lifestyle, you know, um, uh, he, the, the, um, the the album also comes, the, the context behind this album is how Nike and other, com- other fashion companies kind of counted him out and he wasn't getting, you know, a, a, a seat on the board and all that kind of stuff. So that's there. So that those things are there. But to me, what makes this album special is the fact that for the majority of the album is just him talking about how depraved he is and uh, wearing it as a badge of honor, you know, his arrogance, his uh, promiscuity, you know, his uh, materialistic lifestyle. And then on the closer bound to, he's just like, listen, this is who I am. 
uh, to uh, Kim Kardashian, will you still accept me? And I feel like that is beautiful. And uh, the way and that when that realization hit me, I was like, yeah, this has to be um, an STR for me as well. Uh, so, uh, so th this so this is something that you only get once you dig really deep into the context and all that. But beyond that, the sound of his album is blaring. It's 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 abrasive. It's rough. It's uh, you know. Um, but uh, but the the fact is that he did have to work with a bunch of artists to get that kind of sound. Rick Rubin, Daft Punk, uh, so on and so forth. But um, I would say it's not an album for everyone, but do give it a shot. It's uh, I would say it's it's like you know it's the um, de facto experimental album in his catalog that every great artist should have at least one of them, I guess, to be uh, termed great. Um, so f favorite songs I would say you know the you know Blood on the Leaves and New Slaves. I, I feel like New Slaves, contrary to what Meghna said, I I feel like New Slaves is uh, a really really good portrayal of the new the the things that haunt us today you know um in this changing landscape and uh you know the, which which could be corporations it could be pe people trying to control you people trying to stifle speech people trying to stifle ideas and um, the way he just puts them up uh like for everyone to see in a very transparent way i love that about this album uh least favorite track again guilt trip um I and I'm I'm in it also. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it, but in general, okay, okay, maybe it's on S. Maybe it's an eight. Yeah, cool. I don't like a few songs. Alright, it's an eight. <laughs> right. So, uh, yeah, but again, so uh, I would say give this album a chance. Give this album a chance. That's all it is. Um, so the next album, I'm actually going to let Meghna give us the intro uh, because I know she's dying to talk about the life of Pablo. Um, <laughs> Nina, why don't you tell us about Life of Pablo? Okay, so Life of Pablo. So why um, I love Life of Pablo is I think um, on a personal note, this album will always be special because it was the first Kanye rollout I experienced as a fan. Because it was 2016, I was in my third year of undergrad. I had already gone through Kanye's discography a bit. I was a fan. I had established opinions outside of, you know, what Reddit says. And... Um, uh, the, the, the release, I wish it could have been smoother. I think it was quite controversial. It was released as a title exclusive. Uh, it was heavily pirated for that reason. And uh, he re-released it a couple of times, updated the production a bunch. So it was a bit of a mess, hot mess. But um, um, OK, so I'm going to actually start off with the criticisms of Life of Pablo before I get to why I like Life of Pablo. So. Um, uh, Number one, I agree. Um, after multiple listens, you definitely do dive into the lyrics. And uh, especially considering the lyricism was an aspect I enjoyed in his early work, um, this album fares poorly in that respect. Um, but maybe I've heard this enough number of times for it not to be an issue. Um, this album is quite um, all over the place in terms of the um, track list. I think it could have been more cohesive, slightly bloated, could have dropped some tracks, could have rearranged some tracks here and there. But um, uh, I think um, um, Ultra Light Beam, the opener and the closer, um, St. Pablo, are pretty rock solid in terms of lyrics. But outside of that, yeah, some questionable choices. But anything with the waves is a 10. So I'm going to start talking about <laughs> why I love this album. <laughs> in spite, yeah. in spite of like uh, Chris Brown. Um, featuring on it, and I know he sounds the same on every track, which is like my biggest pet peeve. <laughs> <laughs> Love waves. Okay, so this album, um, crucify me now, but like, uh, what, what's, what's great is um, this project has hit me like none other of Kanye's works, mostly because I remember having such a blast. I was thoroughly enjoying myself the first time I played this. Like, I was having so much fun. I'm like, as a listener, if I'm having so much fun just receiving this, I wonder how much fun Kanye had just making this beautiful, beautiful album. Speaking of beauty, this album is terrible. It's despicable. It's heinous. It's, it's, it's disgraceful. But <laughs> it's, it's also like just a lot of fire. Um, and I think that's what I like about this album, that in spite of all of uh, this, we kind of do see the beauty in it. Um, right off the bat, um, I think my favorite transition in tracks were um, 
FML to Real Friends to Wolves. I think that was hands down my favorite um, transition in Kanye's discography in general. Uh, I know um, Shanti mentioned uh, previous Nina Simone samples, but I really think Famous, the way it ends with Nina Simone's vocals is great. Loved it. I found myself just like moving to that. It was, it was so much fun. Um, what else? I think um, I'm pretty shallow that way. A good hook just draws me in. I come to the lyrics later, <laughs> maybe on my fourth listen, fifth listen. Uh, I'm like, lyrics, what? No, it, it sounds great. <laughs> so I think that's why um, Life of Pablo really drew me in, because once I'm hooked, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to dissect it. Uh, it's so well produced. Every single sound complements the other. Uh, it shouldn't work, but it does, like the crazy piano, strings, the dirty bass, uh, the harmonies. I really feel like this is something that you wouldn't expect would work, but it does for me. Um, yeah, um, if if that description was an indicator enough, it's a solid clear S. <laughs> All right, but do you think Taylor would have slept with him? Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's a no, that's a no for me as well. All right. So favorite track or favorite tracks? Oh, that's really okay, hard. Least favorite track. Least, least favorite, favorite track. track. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. I think we could have done without the um, silver surfer intermission. I, I mean, I think oh. interludes are fine, but <laughs> that interlude I didn't I didn't care for at all. Um, um, what else do I not like? Probably. Um, I mean, I actually do really enjoy No More Parties in LA, but the more I think about it, it's just kind of on loop, like the same five seconds on loop. It's really fun track, but um, I, I think maybe maybe I'd pick that. Favorite tracks, definitely the first three, Ultra Light Beam, Father Stretch My Hands, and Part Two. Great. Um, also really love um, uh, Wolves, um, Waves, obviously, San Pablo, Fade. Yeah, a lot of favorite tracks on this. All right. Neha. Beautiful. Yeah. I think Meghna gave a very very perfect description yeah, of life she stole of all of our sound bites yeah, yeah. you are very good like, at expressing go your first, thoughts right? i really yeah i really like the way she you know gathers her thoughts and she puts them into language i don't think i do a very good job at it it's just this <laughs> yeah 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 i on the other hand find it quite hard to describe my emotions in words i, I feel like words don't do a good job at that but uh, for life of pablo i feel like this is one album which has something for everyone. It's uh, for me, it fits any mood. Like I, I'm, like I said previously, I need to be in a certain kind of emotional space to listen to music. With Life of Pablo, I just feel like I can listen to it when I'm on the verge of, uh, you know, losing my shit. <laughs> when I'm maybe I've created something successfully, I will listen to it. So it just like fits any mood for me, and that's a huge thing for me because not a lot of artists or albums or songs can do that. I love the hooks and uh, I would agree with Meghna on this, that hooks really draw me in more than lyrics for any song, I would say, because lyrics are kind of secondary for me. And the hooks on this are just amazing. Like the first time I heard this, I was like, whoa, what, what kind of headspace do you need to be in to be able to produce and to be able to create something like this. And yeah. it just sounds, overall, it just sounds very, very beautiful, very elegantly made. And um, I think contrary to some of the popular criticisms on this, I do feel like the album flows in a very cohesive manner. I didn't feel like, it's, it's quite a huge album. I think it's over an hour, but it does feel very cohesive to me. It feels like, you know, the songs are just like flowing and they are blending into each other. And uh, uh, the production is amazing. I think the hooks, the tune, the rhythm, all of that really, really, really makes it an S tier for me. And uh, it's the lyrics are debatable. I do like it on quite a lot of the tracks, but I, I don't think they, they are great on some of the other tracks, but how are the hooks and the music and everything else just makes up for it. So it's a solid S for me. And uh, my favorite tracks on this, definitely Saint Pablo, beautiful, amazing. No, I don't think, uh, I, I literally have chills over my skin whenever I listen to it. It's just 
that amazing, that great. Um, I love Famous. I love the Nina Simone bit at the end. It's very eerie, very nice, very nicely made, uh, very beautifully produced. Wolves, uh, again, never heard something like Wolves. It just instantly like stuck with me. And, you know, it's just like, it's there. I, it's, it's a song you can't just forget or you can't replace it with anything else. And uh, Ultralight Beam, I, I think I have a lot of favorites on this. It's hard for me to pick one. Um, and uh, I agree with Meghna, you know, the Silver Surfer Intermission, the low lights, uh, they don't do a lot for me. They're okay. It's cool that they're there. They're not like the best thing to have, I guess. So yeah, that's all from my end. Shanti. Uh, so, so the life of Pablo, on the first time I heard it, uh, I, f I found it to be a little bloated. I found it to be, you know, th there were a few highlights in the middle. I, this was me three years ago, by the way. Uh, so yeah, I I did like a few tracks, but I felt like it was like it was just bursting at the seams with so much content that you know it's uh, too much to absorb, and I kind of like discounted it. But then over time, so I view so there are two trilogies within Kanye's uh, discography, the, uh, at least the way I see it. Uh, there is the dropout bad trilogy, and there's a progressive trilogy, right? Which is My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, The Yeezus, and Life of Pablo. And the Life of Pablo, to me, is the most mature rendition of the ideas that he came up with in the progressive trilogy. So you have the um, the more expensive, lush production from my beautiful directors of fantasy and also the 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 more uh, abrasive elements from Yeezus coming and also the the filthier lyrics from Yeezus and the more uh, you know uh, in your face type feel of Yeezus so these things come together in a very weird way and um, so the album is a mess but it it's a mess that flows so deceptively well from track to track and um uh, so uh, it's an album where Kanye wrestles with very and, and and the rollout for this album I feel like was the most tumultuous public media uh, era in Kanye's life right uh, at, at least I feel like so um, you had him wrestling with the pious man the Kanye was the, the family man and the uh, depraved person that he always is and he always will be regardless of how much of Jesus uh, you know or the Bible that he chants today uh, so so it's it, it is a messy album but it uh, but if you the, your appreciation of the album will heavily stem from how much you actually follow Kanye as this this creative genius and his public persona and the way uh, and um, his wrestling with um, the way he's portrayed versus the way he wants to portray it and his own confusion. So I feel like that way it's a more complex album, but I do feel like um, a, a lot of the fat can um, could have been cut away. I feel like... Um, um, uh, on on some tracks, he, he he kind of goes a bit too far with the messaging. Sometimes he he doesn't address certain issues well enough. Um, so, you know, uh, either way, it, it is it is a fun album. Like the, the, there's not to say like some of my favorite Kanye tracks are on this album. Like you have Famous, which you know uh, that song never gets old. Famous, like <laughs> that that intro bar, that intro bar always has me in stitches. Like every single time. Um, Ultra Light Beam, amazing opener. Uh, but it's 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 no dark fantasy, but it's an amazing opener. Uh, and also, which is uh, Saint Pablo is. I feel like if if dark fantasy is the greatest opener, Saint Pablo is the greatest closer to any of Kanye's albums. Okay, it's it, it's it's the it, it's the song where he brings together this mess of an album together, where he 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 talks about uh, just puts everything in his brain on display and with Kanye's brain it will take a six minute track of him just ranting to get that uh, uh, on um, to, to get that out I guess so a little bloated uh, I, I, I wish it was uh, a little bit shorter I wish he had explored these ideas a bit more I wish he wasn't as uh, self-absorbed in this album but I guess it is an album where he is the album is about him being self-absorbed and uh, your enjoyment of the album is heavily dependent on um, how much of his personality you actually uh, care about, you know. Um, the Kendrick Lamar feature on No, no More Parties in LA, amazing. 
and like this was like right after the this thing right tpab right i guess like the, the year after tpab if i'm not wrong 2016 so, yeah that's right 2016, 2016 right yeah 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 so uh, this was again i mean uh, again so like like i said before right so this is kanye being the creative ceo like he has these ideas in his head and he kind of delegates it to the best minds in the industry to make this happen and yeah that uh, that's all i have to say about the life of pablo i guess um cool so moving on we we have the year 2018 a year in which he releases five albums collaborating with various artists you had nas you had pusha t and you had two albums that we want to talk talk about from that um which is his self titled is it a self titled is ye a self titled yeah. album yeah like all right cool. i would think it's so self- Cool. It's it's a self-titled album, and also the one that he came out with with Pusha T. So I, I guess we could talk about both uh, because both of them have kind of similar themes, right? When 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 it comes to mental health and its portrayal of mental health and all that, although they are completely different albums, um, released like I think within weeks of each other uh, in in 2018. So I guess we could lump these two albums together in a single conversation. So make now Ye and Kitsy Ghosts. Yeah, it's oh, interesting. Oh, by the way, Hilop is an A for me, by the way. <laughs> I'm just I forgot about that. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mm. Um yeah, I think um I really like the what you mentioned earlier about how um your impressions of the album is how much you are aware and um take part in Kanye's personality. Um and it's interesting cuz um Ye and Kitsy go start year was a really difficult year for Kanye it was vulnerable Kanye it was Kanye um open about um his mental state um and how he's been feeling um I think I'm going to talk about Ye first so um I think Ye's biggest uh the the disappointment for the disappointment for me or its biggest crime was that it's quite forgettable um the short length uh, of all of the albums he put out that year means that there shouldn't be any room for errors it needs to be tight but um there was a lot of room to flesh out some of the ideas further i know you said that about life of pablo but that's what i felt about yeah especially um when you don't have um these hooks to kind of carry you or you know um i get that it's supposed to be this vulnerable grounded project but um i i also do acknowledge the fact that it was really empowering for a lot of his fans because they found this project to be a lot re- more relatable than some of uh, its uh, pompous counterparts in his discography but uh some shitty opinions on this album the writing on violent crimes is appalling i remember feeling really uncomfortable with what he's saying <laughs> um i think ghost town single handedly carries the weight of this album um Yeah so that is yeah um Kitsy Ghost on the other hand was a collaborator album with Kid Cudi which I thoroughly enjoyed um all of the drawbacks that I saw in yeah was kind of fixed in Kitsy Ghost where it was a lot tighter uh, again another really great transition from fourth dimension to free to reborn so great love that um great writing i think maybe kadi gets more credit for that than me i'm not sure <laughs> but i remember really being blown away by the lyrics on reborn um some of my favorite writing considering um this was an album in the later leg of his discography which i thought was probably uh, one of the weaknesses in the sense that his earlier half was more lyrically strong uh i think it was everything yeah was not unfair comparison considering that this was a collaborative project but um Uh yeah I think I would um put ye in tier um d and probably kitsy goes in tier b yeah b all right uh favorite track from ye and kitsy goes oh uh a favorite track from ye for sure goes down um okay. I did not like violent crimes <laughs> if that was not clear <laughs> uh right. I thought about killing you was also a little bit pretentious but interesting album opener for kitsy ghost uh, love the three tracks for dimension free and reborn uh also really like actually feel the love a track i didn't like um oh, that was an instant banger dude no no yeah i'm not sure yeah yeah maybe maybe depends on the mood yeah yeah it does that's yeah all right can be a little jarring yeah yeah all right so neha the psychologist 
uh, in the in this call. We interested to get your take on Yee and Kitsy ghosts. I have very unpopular opinions on this. With uh, I don't think both of you would uh, agree with me on it, but uh, I felt that Yee was beautiful. I felt it was very personal. It was very very um, uncomfortable. The the opening track about uh, I thought about killing you. He talks about you know homicide and suicide simultaneously at the same time, which is which was very interesting. It was a very interesting take and a very interesting opener for me. Um, I I loved Ghost Town. I loved Violent Crimes as well. Um, these two are the fight, tracks fight, that fight. made. No, we, we we are already I think close to one and a half hours, but uh, I think. It's just That's too okay. hard to fit in Kanye in one hour. But anyway, yeah. uh, I think with Ye, uh, these were the two tracks that really, really puts it on uh, tier A for me. I would say I know that uh, you know there are a lot of drawbacks. The the biggest one being that this is really short. I I would have really liked to hear at least a thirty five forty minute record for this, but uh, I just felt like it was really short. There could have been so much more exploration of the the themes that he was pursuing in this, and uh, I think what puts it on eight year for me is that the the feeling it evokes in me and uh, how how it impacts me. Maybe it's just a personal thing, but I, I just felt like this was a very personal album for me for Kanye, and uh, the struggles could have been portrayed well, which was done. I guess better in Kitsi Ghosts, but uh, I'm not too sure why it doesn't really strike a chord with me. For me, Kitsi Ghosts would be on tier B, perhaps. Um, and I, I do love it. I feel like there there was this theme of you know hope and uh, something that could be that could have gotten better that did get better with Kitsi Ghosts. With Ye, it felt more of into a into a very dark zone into a very gloomy dark space where he was in while he was creating it and with kitsy ghost i do see a more hopeful approach towards life itself that i got that, that, that was a vibe i got from kitsy ghost and uh, yeah uh, i do like a lot of the songs um however i just feel like i don't click very well with the album you know uh, that's again a very very personal preference there uh, i haven't explored very deeply the lyrics of kitsy ghost uh, maybe i'll do that after this podcast and uh, maybe my tier ranking for kitsy ghost will change let's see but for now it's on tier b for me yeah all right shanti that's it all right cool mm, shanti it is right so uh ye and kitsy ghosts um it it's it's good to talk about these albums together right because it is uh, a a point in kanye's life where his uh media antics have kind of, kind of saturated right in the sense that um we kind of knew where we were going and um like half the population either didn't understand what he's doing or just like uh, counted him out and so to me like kanye just telling us what exactly he's feeling was a good approach in concept but not to show about the execution right so let, let's start with yeah so yeah is an album i actually listen to pretty often I, it's an album i actually come back to way more often than 808s although i would put 808s higher up in the tier list uh yeah is an album i come out which is bec- um, uh, mostly because uh, so while neha says the short length is uh, a, a drawback i actually think that the length is perfect for it because of uh because i feel like even in the 23 minutes long i feel like he's kind of exhausted everything and then he just kind of starts making me to a verb and so on uh so uh very very minimal very intimate uh, uh it's like while jesus is an album where he's just screaming about everything he is like this kind of like uh, asmr of his feelings um so no much more to say is just that his portrayal of his mental health um it it could have been done more in a vacuum more in a lightning in a bottle feel and and that's something that i wish was um, better explored on this album but a pretty good album it's an it's an album i would say um um 
with the same, almost the same vibe as 808s but uh, not as uh, you know deep or uh, not nearly enough depth as 808s had but uh, coming to kitsy ghosts we have kid kari and kani was coming together uh, kid kari publicly documented you know his his struggles of mental health throughout the years so it's them and you know with their public falling out as well it was a, it was an album where it was them both introspecting about their own mental health but also it's about them reconciling themselves as two creatives who had a falling out and you know you should watch the tours of, of kids it goes with the floating stage it looks absolutely stunning uh the psychic the influence of psychedelic rock on this uh the the kurt cobain sample on the last track any album with with the kurt cobain sample i'm i'm just i'm just uh, you know floored but um biased cough cough <laughs> by yeah yeah yes. yeah but uh anyway so it's uh, uh the album art as well um Takashi Murakami returns with his amazing color palette and everything. Uh, the album flows really well, extremely tight, not a single loose end. Um, the track "Reborn," where uh, um, Kit Kari talks about how um, uh, you know um, everything starts with himself, you know, and uh, this this whole introspective nature of it, and them kind of. It's a huge contrast to the previous collaborative album that he dropped of Watch the Throne, where it was Jay Z and Kanye West kind of amping each other up. This is an album where it's like both of them are kind of like hugging it out and they're just having a chat over like beer or something like that, which I feel like was a great take. Um, not much more to say. Uh, uh, Feel the love was an instant hook. I love the amazing opener, amazing way in which they use the kind of gunshot beats. I loved and Reborn, Feel the Love and Reborn. I feel like are the best songs, and also I would say a rank among the best songs in his entire catalog. Um, amazingly well produced albums, uh, album um, through and through. So, Kitsy Ghost is, uh, I would say, uh, it is a cliche at this point, but it, it is um, better reimagining of Ye, in my opinion. Um, so, in terms of tier, I would say Ye would be. Uh, yeah, I'll put yeah on the D tier, I guess, and Kitsy Ghost oh. would be on, <laughs> and Kitsy Ghost would be, I guess, B because not that I don't like the album, just that I feel like there are albums in his catalog which are way, 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 way better. Um, but uh, contrary to some uh, uh, some people's beliefs, other I feel like the lengths of these two albums are perfect for what they are, for what they're trying to convey. I feel like any longer, it would have been kind of lost and would have been kind of overblown, like the life of Pablo. So that's my thoughts on that. And now we come to uh, Yandi. Oh, sorry, excuse me, Jesus is King, um, which was uh, um, so I know a little. A little uh, context behind this. So the year he he dropped Kitsy Ghost, I loved it. I was happy. I was like, I, I get five Kanye produced albums. Twenty eighteen was a great year, and then he announces Yandi on Twitter, and I'm excited. See, I, I I'm a simple man. When Kanye announces album, I get happy. But no, no album, and then he just scraps <laughs> Yandi, and then you have these random Sunday service which I keep forwarding to Meghna, and uh, I'm uh, I'm sure that really affected her job performance. <laughs> um anyway so um, uh anyway so that that was a tumultuous year for me as well you know as a Kanye stan but at the end uh, in i think it was october 25th 2019 i i know this date because of how um a highly anticipated Jesus is King was his ninth solo studio album, um, an album where he kind of went and went under this whole r r religious transformation where the mental health issues of the previous two albums were kind of disappeared because he, he kind of found Christ. I mean, good on him, good on him for finding the road to redemption in religion. But, um, you know, I will, I guess we can hand it over to me now. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with uh, Shanti. I think uh, the wait for this album really tested um, your uh, loyalty for Kanye. The wait was just so painstakingly hard. Endless hours spent refreshing Reddit and Spotify. I think my uh, thumbs were numb <laughs> just <laughs> with all the twiddling. Um, I think uh, Shanti kept the spirit alive for the both of us. I had given up, but he was still um, <laughs> faithfully sending over yeah. his um, Sunday service forward. <laughs> and I really appreciate obscure that. Obscure rumors and obscure rumors and links and all that. <laughs> yeah. 
I I I just turned to like TMZ for Kanye for like pretty much. pretty much so much so that when yeah. I read a post on Reddit I'm like is this shanty <laughs> is he spawning new handles <laughs> <laughs> I, I was considering it I was considering it yeah so um Jesus so, King Magna No I'm I'm not particularly religious but I've always appreciated people who are I think their passion is really admirable um the conviction um that sometimes they exhibit and I think Kanye um does that a lot faith is this really passionate um inward energy that he turns to um and I get that he's encouraging his listeners to embark on this journey um with him without him um but he advocates for the peace and um solace that he's kind of found uh but to be honest after this album finally came out um maybe i was already getting crushed under the weight of the weight <laughs> but um bars bars just just uh, uh, honest to quote on quote god um <laughs> this album felt like a blip i only remember sella <laughs> after that i'm like what 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 just happened i don't know <laughs> it all just sounded like i was at a procession um re listen to the album This time I remember every hour and Sela rest of it was just a blip again. <laughs> um it's a it's a not a bad album um for its genre or it's it's the 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 um what it's trying to achieve but in comparison to the other albums I think it doesn't light a candle. Um it's probably I I I'm going to put it in the same tier as Ye but I honestly think Ye was more enjoyable. for me i know that um um this album did um kind of um uh, estrange a couple of his listeners cuz they're like oh this is so religious and this is not for me but um i don't think you necessarily have to partake in something just cuz you're actively listening to it doesn't mean you condone it or you don't condone it um interesting um album i'm i'm looking forward to his next one though <laughs> yeah theory for me all right yeah neha Hmm. How oh, I uh, had to hmm. force myself to listen to this. It was very hard to sit through the album because I was really trying to find what in this album is going to, you know, be that one thing that I'm going to like or what about this is going to be that one turning point where my opinion would change. Unfortunately, it did not. Uh I think the only part i remember in this album is the uh, there was some song which had a father stretch my hand thing and that i remember it was life of pablo but apart from that i uh i thought that uh use this gospel was like okay it, it was forgettable but it was okay the rest of it was really just forgettable for me and i i listened to this album like three three times or so i still couldn't find anything that would make me go back to it um i get that you know people who are maybe more religious find some kind of personal significance uh to this album but it just doesn't do anything for me at all and um i i also think that you know maybe kanye was trying to sort of put out this spiritual side of him he wanted people to embark on this journey with him like megna said and uh you know after listening to his uh, joe rogan podcast i do feel like he sort of uh, thinks of himself as this leader who is god sent and he has a bigger purpose that he wants to convey rather than creating musically brilliant pieces anymore i i don't know if that's something that he's thinking about maybe that's the vision he has for uh, his music taking it forward from here uh, however this record just doesn't do anything for me it doesn't have anything for me which would make me go back to it i would put it on the last tier which i would that is i think it's f or something i'll put it on f, f. Yeah. yeah yes Thank all you. right so kanye has al- always been a religious man and he has portrayed his faith in different ways throughout his career like right from the first album the college dropout yeah jesus walks right so and in that track was uh, him viewing uh the the music industry through the eyes of god i mean is a is a much more complex portrayal of his ideas and his faith and this faith uh thing ha- has been like a motif throughout his entire career throughout each of his albums it's like um 
it's something he he keeps going back to the the, the references to god and jesus and and in jesus he kind of portrays himself as a god but uh, when he talks to jesus and he's stacking up millions or whatever uh, but and this is what uh, and this is the reason why i was so hyped for this album because i am an atheist but the way kanye portrays religion and the way he brings religion into his own psyche and he kind of ties it in with the rest of the world that is a really fascinating way that he does it and the major disappointment with jesus king was that it was just a bible album where he just like create rates uh, verses from the bible and he talks about how god is great maybe some bars about chick fil a um very underproduced album very rushed album last minute uh, not a lot to say in terms of lyricism not a lot to say in terms of any real insight apart from just him celebrating the fact that god is great and we didn't need an entire album to um about that um i will say that the kenny g sax line uh on uses gospel was great it slaps really hard and that's like a glimpse of why uh, of kanye's greatness but it's it just gets lost in the sea of dirt that is this album um not much more to say uh very disappointing but so it's great that he's found himself but uh i do have uh, i am a little optimistic because of the song wash us in the blood that the drop this year where i see that his portrayal uh, again so um, it, it is a more nuanced portrayal of religion and his his uh, god fearing um, tendencies you know um, and with much better production and so on and so forth um will i vote for kanye maybe but uh, i will not vote for jesus king as his um, as a top tier kanye album it's a straight f for me uh, not much else to say in that um, yeah. yeah but so uh, you know going over the entire catalog you know i um, you know the three of us are basically in a cult you know in terms of kanye's greatness um, he is an artist where if anyone says that any album uh, 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 apart from jesus king of course is their favorite you, you just accept it because every album is so different there uh, there's a different context surrounding every album there's the sounds are different the the collaborations every single every, every album he's reinvented himself except jesus king he's uh, reinvented <laughs> himself over and over and over again he's um his impact on art and culture is undeniable and uh, that's uh, that's that's why we even decided to do this Me, i no? feel like uh, whoever is listening to this will actually go and listen to the jesus is king just to know how bad he is and they're going to ignore <laughs> the good parts please don't do that he's uh... so it's not bad it's not bad i just wish that he had spent a little more time on it right you know yeah. the yandi leaks were actually way better than jesus king uh, as uh, rough as they were you know <laughs> Yeah. But it's really interesting how you go on your own journey. Like I love that Neha started with Jesus and um she has a a very different perspective um and um I really enjoyed listening to that. Um I think uh, um so I I wrote down this one quote in preparation for this podcast the one thing I wanted to read out. Um I think it's really interesting when people talk about um I know um Shanti and I've had endless discussions about this um do you do you really need uh, to be hurt or mentally ill to be a great artist um and I know that gets mm-hmm. talked about a, a lot uh, about Kanye West oh he suffers from a warped sense of identity he thinks he's God's vessel he thinks he's Shakespeare uh, I mean but don't be all we all have a warped sense of ourselves and um Um there's this really beautiful um newsletter that uh, Nick Cave um has I'm not sure if you guys have read it the the red hand files and someone asked him this very question and um he he says that um I'm I'm going to read this out this is uh, verbatim um whether being hurt is a necessary requirement to creativity is only true in so much as to live is partly to suffer you cannot create without mm-hmm. suffering because you cannot live without suffering and um i think kanye wears that as a badge of honor and that's why i love his work so much um and um yeah i'd be more than happy if at least one person takes away from this uh podcast and yeah. goes and gives it yeah up. listen to my beautiful dark twisted fantasy mm-hmm. you know just just, just <laughs> yeah. listen to that album it is not a six or maybe <laughs> just take a pick from our opinions from this podcast and you can take yeah. a pick yeah yeah I think uh, I guess that's great like we spent um 100 minutes talking about Kanye 
glorious uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> glorious 100 glorious days like thanks yes. megna for coming on thank you so much for having me this was an absolute blast i expected nothing yeah. else <laughs> yeah all right thanks guys that's all it is all see right. ya see you guys bye bye